Yo, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Uj, and of course, we are back again. Hope y'all doing great today. So, this week's episode of Dino Fury is actually uh, pretty dope, not gonna lie. It was called Lost Signal, and it kind of centered around the idea of how the episode starts with a little bit of some background information on Zato. He's kind of reminiscing on the planet that he came from he's reminiscing on his past we see a little flashback from his mom and it kind of centers around this in a way but it does kind of pay off towards the end of the episode so i actually did fully take notes on this as i was watching it so that way i didn't really miss out on anything that i wanted to talk about with you guys on this episode's review so without further ado let's get right So like I start off saying, Zato's mom is in a flashback and we actually do get to see her visually. Um, she obviously has those uh, antler things that, you know, Zato <laughs> had on his head naturally. And she pretty much, you know, he, he thinks of her and he remembers her um, telling, telling him to like, you know, never give up and type stuff like this. So this is kind of typical and usually we do see this a lot of times in many a different types of shows that you know have this kind of theme to it with you know fighting the bad guys and never giving up and trying to always triumph over the evil and whatnot so we also learned that the planet's name is rafcon i'm not really sure if they specified this in the earlier episodes which is one only one and two but yes uh zato's planet is called rafcon not sure on the spelling i actually haven't looked it up at the time that i recorded this because i'm literally doing this as soon as i finish watching the episode so everything is still fresh in my mind and so we also learned that once he had a conversation um, with the pink ranger which uh i i still I'm, I'm not very good with the names yet guys so please bear with me i'll, I'll definitely it'll definitely take me some time to get to get used to these familiarized with these names he mentions to her that a few survived and that this was millions of years ago so that could be a little tease um as to whom is still out there if they actually get the message which we'll get to uh towards the end of this review um, and see if that's actually where green and black rangers or possibly the gold ranger come into play because we obviously do know for a fact that this team will definitely have six okay and they do show them actually in the first episode if you, so you go back you want to check that out go ahead and check out episode one so you can see for yourself so after this once they do uh share this little story um they go back to the base and zolan who is the you know the alpha of the team if you will had a message from the planet but it couldn't play so they did receive some sort of message but unfortunately they need a component only available on rafcon so right then and there zeta was like so it'll be impossible for us to actually decode this message so here's kind of where the whole episode's direction kind of takes place and it becomes about trying to decipher this message that was seemingly from Rafcon. And, um, you know, of course, since Zato has not been on his home planet in a very, very long time, it goes without saying that they want to definitely figure out exactly what this message entails. So first, so, so the couple ideas were thrown around. Uh, Pink Ranger wants to go see a psychic while um Ali the Blue Ranger I randomly remembered his name he wants to go and check in with you know his his like team of scientists at some like observatory or something of like of that nature I'm not sure if I got the the terminology right but he's all about science right he's definitely all about science and utilizing tools to help him figure things out kind of, I guess was where he gets it, he gets it from his mom obviously they they obviously like to use science to back up a lot of theories or ideas or whatever, which I guess kind of makes sense. Um, but they first end up going to this psychic. Um, I'm not going to lie, the Pink Ranger, th these characters are definitely growing on me and they're only, we're only three episodes in. And I think the Blue and Pink Rangers are definitely uh, growing on me a lot faster and a lot more so than even like the likes of Zato or any of the other casts just because... These two are obviously, you know, two of the main characters and they have a lot of moments to themselves or with each other that just really show off how 
close to realist uh, being you know realistic characters and by that i'm trying to say that like you know they are they are who they are they have like their attributes to them they have their mannerisms and they kind of stick with it and so far it's consistent and i do like that so pink ranger did make me laugh here when she pointed out she pointed over to blue ranger who, who ali who didn't want to do the psychic idea and she was like can i borrow 15 bucks and for just the, just the dialogue that was going on back and forth i don't have the whole script in front of me obviously but the the dialogue going back and forth during this part was actually really really enjoyable and i was like okay like it actually it actually popped me popped the laughter out of me so that was kind of cool so upon going to this psychic um they actually see um uh the pink ranger's boss in there um and you know she was getting some kind of like power up or something like that or, or so she thought right she had her uh leave blindfolded and whatnot and then right after her they it was their turn to um see if she could decipher the message off of the red ranger zato's pendant which of course i don't know if i mentioned this in earlier in in the review but um he does he does have like some he, he was given a pendant from his mom to always remind him of the planet rafcon and where he comes from and so she uses this as a way to i guess quote unquote channel in to the energy and the signal that she's getting from a far off distance and it at first seemed slightly believable but ali was not about to buy into it so what he does is he literally puts on a fake um act with trying to make it look like him and the pink ranger are ha are in some kind of a romantic relationship he puts his arm around there like she, he does the whole works he doesn't go too far though which i i do appreciate and he uh he was like he's like can you can you can you uh read what our future will be like like what will our relationship look like in the future and then and then the madam indigo which is the psychic's name she holds their hands and she says that they are gonna have a long lasting relationship and that'll that'll be many more years to come now the funny part about it is that obviously this was this was a, a pretty good way to do two things one to obviously prove ali's point that she was a fraud she wasn't a real psychic however i also thinking back to it realized that maybe she wasn't a complete fraud and maybe she was actually kind of hinting that these two actually might end up having some kind of an interest together and normally that's how it goes sometimes I, I feel like I've seen this in a lot of other shows where you'll have like two characters that start off not liking each other and then like as the show progresses and goes on they will actually you know get have a, a liking to each other or better yet they might actually end up in some kind of relationship of some sort and this wouldn't be the first time that we see power rangers uh start dating each other and whatnot we see we've seen it plenty of times um in the past so I, you know this is not a bad thing even you know considering how they handled it and how everything is happening naturally on its own now here we go into the monster of the day monster of the day is vipera now vipera is looking like some sort of a medusa kind of character she got a bunch of eyes all over her very uh interesting design um and her ability for this episode is that if you look into her eyes which are oddly enough right on her chest uh they will make you freeze up so i, was, I, I don't know if that was a uh, really thought out or i I don't, I don't know how i want to word this but i guess if you guys feel what i'm saying then i guess let me know in the comments but definitely a very uh, interesting choice of where you have to look to get frozen right so if you do make eye contact with that ability um you are like i said literally frozen can't do anything can't break out of it um and and they show this by actually allowing uh or giving the opportunity to vipera to straight up attack zeta who fell under this uh spell i guess uh really quickly unfortunately 
for for Zato. Unfortunately for him, though, it wasn't like a fatal blow or anything like that. So he took the hit, um, and he was able to. I, we, they were able to um, retreat at that point. Right after this attack, the monster and the other green one, which I can't remember the name, but we see this uh, monster at the beginning of the show as well. Um, you know, as, as, as in the beginning of the series, and they escape with a camera. So you can guess it. You can guess what's gonna happen from here. They're gonna use this camera to, I guess do some kind of live video feed to freeze up everyone that's watching within that signal. And uh, that's exactly what happens. And we'll get to that once we get to it. So of course, Vipira and uh, they, they do end up freezing everyone through a video loop broadcast. Um, and we learned that Zolan isn't affected because Zolan has cyborg eyes. So of, of course, if it wasn't clear before, it's definitely clear now. Zolan is definitely of some sort of cyborg uh type uh m m much more likely well it is definitely this is definitely a lot more comparable to like alpha considering that alpha is also a cyborg in his own respect some sort of robot or whatever however you want you want to word it and um zolan was actually able to snap zato out of it once again because zato did get caught up in the uh well looking at the feed that was being played off and and funny enough the feed was actually um, showing up even in their um, their command center underground, um, so the the the, str the strength of that uh, stream was definitely OD um, in and of itself. Zolan gets an idea right after she su she shuts off the feed. Zato snaps out of it. So as long as they're not constantly making direct uh, eye contact, once uh, the 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 ability is, is effective, it seems like as soon as uh, you know she's not like turning away or something like that then you can i guess snap out of it so i guess there is like a slight blind side uh, uh to this ability and so after this Z zolan decides to take the pendant for that zato's mom gave him and use that as the component um or the energy source for this uh this message to hopefully get decoded and uh, and of course this will this will happen at the end of the episode because in power rangers fashion they gotta have um, a Megazord fight at least so so Zato shows up with the new blindfolded uh, with the new key while also being blindfolded he shows up with the sonic dino key which allows him some uh, sonar abilities so much like Ryu soldier they do have loads of dino keys to use um, which with, with each one having some different type of, of ability um, or trait something that will it's kind of like a, a, a like a, like a power up i guess is the best way to explain it and this one allows zato to actually fight unmorphed bind you he fought unmorphed utilizing this blindfolded and i think they did this um unmorphed because it would kind of look silly if he was morphed and he had like a blindfold over his helmet because that's like i don't know just probably just looks a little dumb but um, I do appreciate this unmorphed fight, I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't too bad, and uh, works like a charm, he is able to get some offensive in, and then also destroy the video feed, that, uh, which of course did unfreeze everyone simultaneously, which then leads into the Zord battle. Now, I don't know if they, they called the Red Zord, the T-Rex Champion Zord um, before, but I will say it now, the T-Rex Champion Zord is actually... A very sick name and this is the red solo zord which can actually fight on its own it can use its um chest piece which is the head of the um the the red zord altogether as like um as like a, as like a, a boxing glove i guess and also i wanted to note that this was our first time that we see a quick morph from zato once the other two did join in um, we don't see like a full sequence. The sequence actually went to green and, or I'm sorry, to blue and pink, uh, which did look pretty cool. Looks like they are obviously recycling the same, um, the same one where they're like kind of looking at themselves, um, uh, at, looking at the morphing grid, kind of take on the the power or like or pass the power to them so that way they can morph into their suits and whatever. Um, and again, the the soundtrack that goes along with this show and more specifically with this sequence just fits so well. And it's it's such a good like morphing sequence. I feel like every time I watch it, it honestly gets better every time you see it. Um, and I did make a little gif um, of it from the first time they did this in episode two. And 
a lot of people I, I feel like I turned a lot of people on to it so you, you gotta give props to where the props need to be given moving right along uh, blue decides to make a, a, a trap from cutting the concrete and pinks uh, Zor to destroy it making a box like I'm making a box hole so oh yeah before uh, well, let me first say this obviously um at this point in time it's been three episodes and where the other zords and finally they were um fixed up and now blue and pink now have their zords to utilize so of course they came in and like i just mentioned um ali had the idea to use the sword end of his zord to cut up a hole in the ground where pinks destroyed that hole making it um, it looked like they were trying to make a trap, but they that actually didn't play off at all. What they ended up doing was they cut up a part of the concrete road, destroyed it. They sent all of the pieces at the at, at Vipera as an attack, and then and then funny enough, they um, they were able to reform it right back into that concrete road. And use it as a cover-up for her eyes, so that way they could no longer uh, uh, have to worry about getting frozen in the middle of a fight. So, and at this point, we finally see our first Zord transformation, full Zord transformation. I called it the Gatai because I'm just so used to watching the Japanese version. So, we finally get to see the Dino Fury Megazord, and that's exactly what it's called. Zato calls on the Mega Fury Saber, which unfortunately, and this, I say unfortunate because this looks like a really dope sword that they should use outside of the cockpit, but unfortunately, like I am saying, this is a cockpit Zord only sword. And uh, they use this to deliver the Mega Slash attack, which basically one shots Vipira. Vipira goes bye bye, and that is basically it with this fight. And they do obtain the Sporix and return to the base after a quick appearance from void knight so we do get to see void knight for literally all of like maybe a minute tops and there it goes so now before the episode completely wraps up we obviously do get to see what happens at um the return they go back to the base and they're able to um see what the what the what the message is now i do appreciate the um like all the teases that they are kind of setting up within the show so far within its little within the lore that it brings to the power rangers uh dino fury especially the message is played so they didn't manage to fix the device but unfortunately it was misunderstood and and they couldn't understand the language of the message because it kind of did sound like some very alien like language um and not even zolan could decipher it so um, but there is some light to this. So Zolan does think that it still could be from Rafcon and that the language just simply changed over the millions of years, which I guess is very true. Language does evolve and change, you know, as time goes on. And so Zato decides to send his own message. And so the whole and 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 it seemed like he kind of didn't really just send it to Rafcon per se, but he sends the message out to the whole universe and i wanted to point this out specifically because i feel like again this is another miniature tease that you know this feed is could potentially get picked up by anybody that's within its range and like i said and how they did the, how they showed it right in the show they they have like a a, a crazy wide shot of, or is like a zoom out of the message being sent out from earth and you see like you know the whole solar system you see like the you know the crazy universe and whatnot and he does say like i left i left ravcom 65 million years ago i would give anything to know if anyone is still there so who knows maybe whoever are whoever were the survivors of that of, of ravcon from all those years ago who knows if they were still uh able to you know stay alive long enough to get that message or maybe there it, we'll see some new characters come out or maybe we might see returning characters because again this is something that i wanted to point out specifically for that reason right there is that this could quite possibly be a way to get other types of rangers involved later on in the series now that that might be me thinking way too far ahead of myself but that's something that i i obviously wanted to point out and i wanted to talk to you guys about on this review um, because, you know, being that this is obviously a dinosaur team and this is a, uh, this is 
could quite possibly be the last Power Ranger season that we see done in the fashion and in the style that it has been done for like the last decade, it seems. Um, and we don't really know exactly what is to come after. I mean, we did get confirmation that we are definitely getting an animated series. I think that this is the best opportunity to do some kind of crossover with whomever can possibly show up. And I'm not talking about anyone from, you know, the, the Nickelodeon Power Rangers shows. I mean, obviously, Dino Charge is an, is an exception considering that obviously it's dinosaurs on dinosaurs. But I would that it would be very interesting if we thought outside the box and imagine if that feed got sent to ko 35 and imagine we saw you know the likes of andros we saw the lost galaxy rangers from uh with terra venture there it goes we you know terra venture or any other you know out there sources out uh, you know out guitar you know what i'm saying like the, the the possibilities are endless and this is, could also be a really interesting way to introduce the omega rangers low key because even though those are comic book oriented only for the time being um that would be very interesting if we did see some sort of omega ranger involvement considering that the omega rangers their their home base is not on earth it's always out there so that'd be kind of interesting now i'm not i'm not trying to say oh is this the way that they get zach to return you know obviously what are they going to do with trini what about, about jason we just saw him in, in in the last um anniversary episode or just special episode um but uh i don't i i the answer is i i'm not really sure it could be a whole new team for all i know but i'm just kind of putting my all my thoughts out there so overall i did think that this episode was pretty uh it was pretty good it was well written and it did pay it did have a payoff so with all that in mind guys thanks again for tuning in make sure you guys let me know what your thoughts are about this episode and uh i will see you guys in the next one make sure you guys are taking care taking care of yourselves may the power take you a lot glitter right here on the channel i'll see y'all next time